Welcome. So today I'd like to kick off a new mini series on the documents you need for the publication process using types. And this is aimed at, you know, at someone who's new and to types, but wants to generate these documents uh, in their journey of publishing. This, the five documents I want to focus on are the cover letter. So what you need when you submit a journal paper to a man, for a manuscript or manuscript for publication, a resume, something to take with you when you go to a conference or a job interview, the response letter, which is used for responding to feedback that you get from a conference or a journal paper, the journal or conference paper itself, and a presentation. So presenting or generating some sort of uh, slide deck that you could use uh, when you go to present at a conference or at an interview. So the first one's the easiest, it's the cover letter. And you'll need this when you're submitting a paper for a journal. You won't need it for a conference, you'll, you will need it for a journal. And it allows the editor-in-chief or associate editors to understand how your manuscript or your, your draft fits within the scope of the journal. And so uh, writing a letter is a very common document that you'll need in not just journals, but in other, um, in other professional areas of your life as well. And so I wanted to focus a little time on how to write a cover letter. Now, there are many templates available uh, to generate a letter. We could just import them, but in, um, in the best spirit of learning types, I want to show you how to do certain things without necessarily just using a template. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is set your page up. So you set your page. Uh, we'll change the paper to be US letter. And then we'll set the margin. We can set the X and the X to be one inch and the Y to be one inch. So this, will, this is now our paper is basically set up. Um, the first thing you'll want to do is do the the two, the, sorry, the from block. Then you're going to want to do a two block. Then you're going to write your letter. And then you're going to close. with a signature and other co-authors. So in the from block, the way I like to do this is to use a grid and I'm going to explain why. So I like to use the grid because if I have two columns and I'll explain why two columns in one second, but there's going to be one column that's going to be a fill and there's going to be one that's an auto. And the reason is, is I want to put everything right justified on the page, but I want to left justify the text. So here's what I mean. So you're gonna have an empty block. That's sort of like your filler, all of this white space to the left. And then on the right is gonna be some content. So you can see I have content here. So I'm gonna reformat this so it's a little more readable. And what I wanna do is put um, the information there. So we can do uh, something like something like this. So I have my name, um, you could just do my organization, um, my address and phone. And then if you want, you can even do a link. So you have an email, so you could say like, uh, first, last, at mail.com. And then what you want it to show, you could say, you know, well, actually it automatically did that, but, um, Sometimes you want to show something different. So you could say, you know, your name at mail.com. But you have to escape the at sign um, on that one. So it's up to you how you want to do it. And then if I click it, it'll open the mail app uh, from the PDF, which is nice, like a hyperlink. So uh, see how it's all left justified here. That's the goal here. Now, if you don't like that and you want to all write, the easiest way to do this is just to use the align, right? Oops, I need an L. 
and it right aligns everything in that cell. But I much prefer left aligned, but right on the right on the paper. The two block is a little bit easier. Uh, you don't need anything. You just you just type. So you could say you know the editor name. So this is the editor in chief of the journal. Journal name, and then you know maybe the maybe you say something like call it EIC editor in chief, right? So you can do that. If you want to, you can do the journal address, but that's not ne always necessary. Okay, so there is your setup. So you know you're this is what you're. You are, you're sending it to this person, the editor-in-chief, to review. Um, and then the editor-in-chief will assign it to an associate editor or some other person, or maybe they handle it themselves, and they'll manage the peer review process. So that's essentially, let's make this a little smaller, see a little page. That's essentially the process you're about to enter. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do, you know, something like, you know, dear editor, right? And uh, I used a text red. So that way you know you need to change these things. I could do this here too, but I just wanted to show, you know, if you're bad about writing things in, in templates and making sure you need to change it, one easy way is to just um, change the color of the text so it tells you you need to do something. So, you know, dear editor, right? I am writing to you, writing to submit, how about this, submit our manuscript entitled and we can do text red and then title we'll do it in quotes too title of manuscript all right for consideration for publication in a journal there right and then you can make a statement about you know your paper is original it's not been published anywhere it's not being considered for anything um, this is good because it just basically tells the editor that there's no count there's no uh, nothing they need to worry about as far as plagiarism because it's not already under consideration or doesn't been assigned to someone else so that's a good thing to you'll want to say that then you need to make some sort of statement about how your manuscript um, you know, is important. And it's very important not to repeat the abstract here. You need to be very concise about your paper and how it fits within the scope of the journal. Um, if it's part of a special session, make sure to mention that uh, here. Um, then you need to kind of make some you know, conclusion about you know, how it's a good fit. We feel that it's a good fit for the journal. We feel that the author, the readers will receive it well, something like this. Um, all the authors have approved the manuscript and agreed to submit to the journal. That that's usually sits there. Um, you know, the last one is, you know, thank you for consideration. So something of that nature. Uh, we believe this is be interested in your readership, um, you know, Something like some some of this kind of duplicates, but this is generally how I frame a journal paper when I'm going about publication. And so with that, I just wanted to make sure that you know you're seeing the same thing that I generally have in my template. Um, and then the last thing is your closing. So this is where we can have a little more fun. Um, but there's not a lot of fun here because this is a very simple document. But um, in the closing of your letter, you know you could say something sincerely. And then you know you can put you know we put your title your name your title um, you know you can do this one thing where you could do I could do some V space here so I can physically print this out sign it and scan it like if you're old school uh, like me then you would want to do that um, you also want to add your co-authors um, so you know. Each one of them and, and their location and their institutes. If you have sit, you know many authors, you might have many here. So I just put a couple here. Another thing you could do. So if you don't like to scan and resend and all this stuff, uh, you could use a different font and like kind of fudge your signature. So 
Here's how I do that. I go to fonts.google.com, all right? And then I look for a handwritten font. So we come over here and you click this handwritten one. And the one I like is Great Vibes, but you know, maybe you have something you really like. Uh, maybe you really like Playwright or you know whatever. Check the, make sure to check the uh, license of this font. You know, it's gotta be very, um, you know, it's gotta be, you know, you saw so dancing. So let's look at this. So we'll click about license. You can use them in products, print, digital, commercial, or otherwise. So this is great, right? So the open font license. And so then you download this font. So you get font and then you download it. Okay, so then let's say we've downloaded it, right? So I've downloaded the font and I come over to my downloads folder and I take the true type font. So we're gonna come over here to the explore files and I can drag the TTF over here. See, I've done that with Grape Vibes. So I've done that and it's, you know, I can just overwrite it or skip it, right? So there it is sitting right there. The other thing I could do is have a signature and I can uh, scan that signature and save it as an, a PNG file. Uh, and I wanna show you how to put those both in. So if you don't wanna do it this way, what you can do is let's talk about if I had uh, the signature already scanned because some people do that. You just do an image and then you say uh, signature PNG. Oops. And then height. And we can do 0.5 inches. So there it's shrunk a bit, right? So that's there. Okay. So that's that's the PNG of you know your name signature, right? So um that's a signature you know handwritten now i did it with the actually font and screenshotting and all this stuff but i just want to show you you can put a signature in another way you can do it is to use the font so you say font and then you tell it what font you say great vibes and oh sorry sorry text <laughs> font Great vibes. And then we say the size. Let's do 24 point. And then I can do this thing like, you know, um, you know, your name. Right. So that's another way uh, you can kind of fudge your signature into a document is just by using a font. And, and that's okay. I mean, it just depends on what your personal preference is. If it was up to me, um, I usually do the vertical space, print it out, hand sign it, scan it, and send it off. It allows me to reread the entire document before I send it. But again, it's up to your personal preference, however you want to do it. I just wanted to show you a few ways you can do it. And by the way, this is a way you can also use fonts that aren't included with types.app. You can find them on Google, the ones that are open license, and use those as well. So. That's a good uh, way of doing things. Or the presentation, uh, please let me know and I'll make sure to try to add it in this mini series. Uh, thank you and um, have a good day.